everybody, I'm Biebs Kelly. Welcome to the next installment of the Oprah interview series. So this portion begins with Megan reiterating that she was upset that the security wouldn't be provided for Archie and that it wasn't their fault that this media monster had been created around them. So they sort of, the implication is they sort of owed her and her child security, greater security, simply because they allowed stories to run in the press and didn't argue them. The logic there is a little flawed. While I was pregnant, they said they want to change the convention for Archie. Hmm. Well, why? Which leaves viewers confused what exactly the problem is. But Oprah misses this altogether. The idea of our son not being safe and also the idea of the first member of color in this family not being titled in the same way that other grandchildren would be. Also, she points out that she wanted them to announce that they were going to not title Archie and not provide him security before he was born. They didn't want him to be a prince, which would be different from protocol. Sort of like she was trying to say, unless you make an announcement and tell people that you're not going to title him and why, I won't take a picture. But also it's not their right to take it away. Yeah. Because the interview has been scrubbed from the internet as adequately as possible. There's a lot of misconceptions about this portion of the interview. The impression the public was left with was that Meghan simply did not grasp that Archie would become a prince when King Charles became king. On the contrary, Meghan is claiming that the royals were discussing changing this rule to where Archie and Lily would not automatically become prince or princess when King Charles became king. Just to clarify, Oprah asks if there was any truth to the news that came before that they chose not to title their kids, to give their kids no titles and let them choose when they were older, similar to what Princess Anne did or the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. They did not give their children titles automatically. They were letting them decide when they were older. Megan says this is not true. The titles are their birthright to decide what to do with. And again, this comes across very confusing because it sounds like she's saying the kids should decide when they're older. That's what that sounds like. But what she's really trying to say is that she was upset that they weren't going to get titled prematurely or automatically. Was there a specific reason why you didn't want to be a part of that tradition? We're gonna do things in a different way. That's not it at all. Rumors are because there was a lot of fishy stuff happening around the pregnancy and the announcements and Harry and Meghan were trying to keep everything so secretive that people were just like staying out of it and letting them do their own thing because they were being so incredibly difficult about it. You leave your opinions on those rumors in the comments. They weren't asked to take a picture. That's also part of the spin that was really damaging. I thought, can you just tell them the truth? Can you say to the world, you're not giving him a title and we want to keep him safe and that if he's not a prince, then it's not part of the tradition? Which confused me because Megan just said she wasn't asked to take a picture after Archie was born. And Oprah says, well, why didn't you want to be part of that tradition? So that leads the viewers to wonder, did Megan and Oprah have a conversation, a casual conversation previously, in which Megan revealed that she didn't want to do any of that. She didn't want to participate in any of that. Maybe because it's sort of like in protest almost, or as a reaction to hearing that they wanted to change that convention so that Archie and Lily wouldn't get titled. So she was like, well, I'm not going to play ball. I'm not going to take the picture. And so a lot of viewers are getting that impression because Oprah proceeds to ask, why didn't you want to be part of that tradition? It's because of his race. But I can give you an honest answer. She's not very honest in this portion of the interview. I'm just going to come out and say it. And also, she's very confusing the way she explains this. So hang in there. In those months when I was pregnant, all around the same time, we had in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, it's not going to be given a title and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born is just plain false it had nothing to do with that they were never even in the running to be titled until king charles became king it just is not it doesn't work that way um so obviously you can't say it had anything to do with race um her claiming that they were thinking about changing the convention may or may not be true but they had not yet done it. And so her trying to claim all this extra stuff that there was all these other reasons is silly and foolish. Hold up, there's Stop several right now. There are several conversations. There's a conversation it. with you. With Harry. About how dark your baby is going to be. 
potentially and what that would mean or look like. Oprah asks who said that. Megan says there were several conversations with Harry which was relayed to her. She didn't hear any of this herself. She is not a primary source. I wasn't able to follow up with why, but that if that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one. Definitely the worst portion of the interview because it was such serious accusations, recklessly discussed without clarity, evidence, or fact, very, very poorly handled by Oprah, and may very well be the portion of the interview that drove it being banned because of the potential for defamation lawsuits of massive proportions. Another thing proven false in this very interview is the time frame of when it happened, which you will see in an upcoming segment. Harry disputes when this happened. He has a completely different version of this conversation happening. He thinks it's just one conversation that happened while they were engaged before they even got married. Megan thinks it was many conversations that happened while she was pregnant. So this whole thing really came across as trying to frame this as some sort of super nefarious, super dramatic, really shocking, horrible thing. And that is why this portion of the interview is likely one of the most problematic from a legal standpoint, because it is really riding that line of defamation way too closely. You're trying to make this seem like it's something horrible and terrible and ist, and it's just plain not. That's really serious. And this is a portion that has upset people a lot. And it's also got s such a confusing format and approach. It's very clumsily discussed. And when you're discussing something so serious, you have the responsibility to not be clumsy about it, to be very, very clear and direct and you know, provide evidence, but she did none of that. Oprah did none of that. And so I understand why the consensus is slightly different from what actually was said in the interview, but that just goes to show the risks of bringing such serious claims to a public platform like this. If you're not super clear and have evidence to back it up, then the story gets away from you. It runs away from you and becomes bigger and crazy and changes. And you don't want something like that. If Megan had been honest or just stayed out of this mess, I don't think the Oprah interview would be quite as bad as it was. Some pretty shocking things here. I wasn't planning to say anything shocking. I'm just telling you what's happened. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if it shocked you. It's been a lot. Megan's response here was a particularly poor choice of words. I'm not going to live my life in fear, said with an understanding of just truth. But I don't know how they could expect after all this time that we would still be silent if the firm is still perpetuating falsehoods about us. How they could expect that after all of this time, we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us. This asserts that she is still blaming the palace for negative stories that were coming out about her and Harry a full year and a half post Megxit. Maketh no sense. I then got told short notice that security was going to be removed. This is a point that a lot of people forget about the security detail being removed. These were UK citizens. It was UK security. Harry confirms in this interview people from the UK who had gone over to Canada and been living with Harry and Meghan for some time doing their jobs away from home. And because the COVID pandemic had come about and they were about to halt travel, halt international travel, borders were about to be closed, had they not been pulled from Harry and Meghan, those people would have been stranded with Harry and Meghan and away from their families for an unknown amount of time. That would have been completely unfair and unacceptable, and Harry and Meghan thinking that it's bad that those people got to go home to their families before the borders were closed for a global pandemic just demonstrates how selfish and insane Harry and Meghan were behaving at the time. Just saying. Harry conveniently never mentions this point that a huge factor to the security being pulled quickly was so that those men and women perhaps could return to their home country and families before the borders were closed. Like he has never, either he's never put two and two together and he's that out of it, or he's purposefully omitting this fact. 
we would no longer be a official working members of the royal family. He stresses official here. Then Megan says, this has all been spun in the wrong direction. All the conversations in the two years before we announced Megxit, they cut off the interview again to a summary of Megxit by Oprah. We actually didn't talk about that, that it's been so spun in the wrong direction. So we quit. We walked away. All the conversations of the two years before we finally announced it. What Megan was trying to say at that point, though, was that they had been asking to have more of a custom working royal arrangement for two years at that point. But this had been cut from the original version that had aired for whatever reason. Here's all the confusing things happening at this particular point, because it's just becoming more and more chaotic and and hard to keep track of. Harry stresses the term official because he thinks for some reason that he should be able to have this half in half out situation. They only wanted to have the same type of role that exists, right? There's senior members of the family and then there are non-senior members. As we said specifically, we're stepping back from senior roles to be just like several, I mean, I can think of so many right now who are all their royal highnesses, prince or princess, duke or duchess. He wanted basically what Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie have where they have jobs, but still occasionally do things. And living, live on palace grounds, can support the queen if and when called upon. So we weren't reinventing the wheel here. We were saying, okay, if this isn't working for everyone, we're in a lot of pain. You can't provide us with the help that we need. We can just take a step back. Harry and Meghan don't really get it that Eugenie and Beatrice don't really do many official engagements really at all. They attend Ascot and garden parties occasionally. Did you blindside the queen? No. He claims they suggested a Commonwealth country. Oprah asks, what did you need to take a break from exactly? Harry says the constant barrage. The biggest concern was history repeating itself. More perhaps, or well, definitely far more dangerous because then you add race in. Saying that there was a race element making it that much more extreme just for a lot of people doesn't feel like it's enough of a justification for the hissy fits that Harry and Meghan are having because they would have had still some degree of security had they stayed living in the UK on palace grounds, but they chose not to. They have more security paid for working as royals than not. They really just were offended at the press coverage. I had uh, three conversations with my grandmother and two conversations with my father um, before he stopped taking And Megan interrupts and says that she remembers Harry had discussed this with the Queen for two years. One might wonder how accurate her claim is if she's not the one actually having the conversation. She claims even the night before the statement was released. She claims that Harry discussed this with the Queen, but Harry does not back this up. Days before with the statement coming out, I remember that conversation. Harry claims that they always knew it would be released on that date because King Charles had told him to put his ideas in writing. He put in writing, I put all the specifics in there, even the fact that we were planning on putting the announcement out on the 7th of January. And Harry put this information that he wanted to announce it on this specific date in his proposal that he had written up for the firm about their arrangement or their proposed arrangement prior. And thus Harry is implying that he didn't need to inform anybody because it was already in this document. He claims that he had had three conversations with the king, queen and two with King Charles before he stopped taking his calls, before the king stopped answering Harry's phone calls. Why did he stop taking your calls? By that point, I took matters into my own hands. Oprah asks, did you tell your family about the mental health crisis? And Harry says, no, this is an inconsistency because later he claims that his family knew and should have done something. He basically is saying that he wanted her treated differently because of her race. Those things all contradict one another, really. What is the truth? Was the queen blindsided? How many discussions were had? How many times did people verbally tell the royal family members what date this statement was going to be coming out? Like, what? how was it communicated? None of that is clear. There's so many different versions just in this brief little portion of the interview. There's a reason that these tabloids have holiday parties at the palace. They're hosted by the palace. The tabloids are. All of this has been disputed and, and people claim this to be a lie, a flat out lie. There is no invisible contract about whining and dining. That's not a thing. Obviously, the press and the firm do have a working relationship to an extent they rely on one another and there are no holiday parties 
throne for the tabloids on purpose. It's kind of like, you know, the press dinner, the White House press dinner. Sometimes there's something like that, but it's more of just like a thank you to these people who do work really hard and somewhat closely. But even that has been disputed as not really being an accurate statement. I'm saying, I don't think you can go. And I said, I can't be left alone. Another inconsistency is not knowing where to go or ask for help when he himself participated in lots of mental health initiatives alongside Prince William and Princess Catherine. My family literally cut me off financially and I had to afford, to afford security for, for us. Wait, hold, hold up, wait a minute. Your family cut you off? Yeah, in the first half, the first quarter of 2020. This grown man, what adult, in his 30s at this point, is expecting to be financially supported by his family it's kind of pathetic. The phrase being cut off versus just simply no longer having the financial benefits of being a working royal, very different things. Megan says that she wrote letters to the family in a very passive aggressive way. She says, it's very clear the protection of me or Archie is not a priority, but please do not pull Harry's security. And they said it's not possible. And wrote letters to his family saying, please, it's, it's very clear the protection of me or Archie is not a priority. I accept that. That is fine. Please keep my husband safe. Asks for clarification on the story that Megan is to blame for Megxit, that she manipulated, calculated, and is responsible for Megxit, and she pretends to have never heard the phrase Megxit at this part, which is unbelievable. Megxit? Oh my gosh. And it's amazing how they can use Meg for everything. Yes. There are even stories that you- Oprah asks if it was all intentional just to build a brand, that that's what people are wondering. Can you imagine how little sense that makes? I left my career, my life, I left everything because I love him, right? Megan was being written out of suits whether she wanted to be or not at this time in her career, so she didn't really have any prospects for her career going forward, but that's, I guess, more of subjective. How to cross your legs, how to be royal. There's none of that training. That might exist for other members of the family. That was not something that was offered to me. So nobody tells you anything? No. Nobody prepares you? No, no I mean, even, no, but even down, yeah, sorry, but even down to like the national anthem. No one thought to say, oh, you're American. You're not gonna know that. And says there's no class on how to speak or cross your legs. There's none of that training. It might've existed for others, but was not offered to me. Even the national anthem I had to Google lie. She was offered so much help and guidance and training. Big red flag flavors there. The impression is that you were happy in your life, Oprah says. Harry says, photos of me smiling is not me enjoying my life. That's just the job. I never thought that I would have my security removed because I was born into this position. I inherited the risk. Mm -hmm. So that was a shock to me. Harry explains that the deals were to pay for security and that they were just suggested by a friend. And Megan says that they hadn't ever thought of it before. And this is like the third time that she has said that they hadn't ever thought of streamers before or like doing media deals, which feels a little bit like maybe she's just saying that and they had thought of these things before because she mentions it so many times and it just doesn't come across as believable at that point. What about streamers? Yeah, we like, genuinely hadn't thought of it I before. I never thought about it. He says that Megan saved him, and Megan says that he saved her. My regret is believing them when they said I would be protected. I believed that. And I regret believing that because I think had I really seen that that wasn't happening, I would have been able to do more. That is pretty much the end of the interview. There's a couple of closing statements, and then that's it. Oh my god, we just did everything we could to, pr to protect yeah. them. So many exaggerations and mistruths, it's crazy across the entire interview. In the final video on this series, we are discussing the backlash, opinions on it, PR perspective, what mistakes they made, what they could have done better, why it was received so badly, if it's not obvious. But it'll be a fun chat. It's coming up next. Everything else, including that video, will be on this playlist here once it airs. The whole Oprah interview series will be on this playlist. It should pop up now for you. I hope. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave in the comments your final thoughts on this interview in its entirety. I am eager to hear what you all think. Thank you again for joining me and I hope you have a happy day ahead. I'll see you next time. Bye!